Hey there! Today it's time to get all loopy. Woo! Because today we're going to have a look at loops. A loop is a magnifying glass which is very useful when you're checking out details on a pen. And when I say loop, I don't mean something like this. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but the problem is that usually these type of magnifying glasses don't give you a magnification that's powerful enough to see the details on pens. Sometimes they have one of those little glasses built in which, which gives you a somewhat higher magnification, but often it's not enough. So what would you use a loop for, and what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about something that looks like this. A jewelless loop, which you open up like that, and has a stronger magnification. I have four here, I'll talk you through them. I'll try to show you what how they, they magnify stuff in a video later, in the later part of this video. But first, let's talk about a loop. What is a loop like this? Well, strictly speaking, it is a couple of lenses. This loop only has one lens. It's a big lens in a, a sort of frame. The loops I'm talking about have a couple of lenses, and each lens corrects mistakes, so um, uh, sort of uh, uh, aberrations or, or uh, uh, distortions created by the other lens. So it's a stack of lenses. And that's why these are often called triplets, because they have three lens glass elements. Um, you also have doublets, which have just two lenses. Then you have quintuplets, which have five lenses. Now, most of these uh, loops will give you a magnification of 10 times, which may not sound like a lot, but I mean, when you, when you talk about a microscope, for example, you may have 400 power magnification or something like this. But a 10, power, 10 times magnification is actually quite good. You can see a lot of stuff on pens, for example, on nibs, that you cannot see with the naked eye. And when you're tuning a nib, making it a bit wetter, making it a bit smoother, something like that, it's very useful to have a loop like that that you can use to see what you're doing and to check your progress. So that's what you've got. So are there any pointers I can give you in, in selecting them? Because the, the, the cheapest one I have is a dollar. And uh, the, the most expensive one I got from Richard Bindner, I think that was twenty dollars or something in that range. So there's quite a price difference, and they they you know they're even more expensive ones, thirty dollars, forty, fifty, sixty, and they go up quite a bit. So the first point I think is that pretty much when it comes to optics, you get what you pay for. A higher price usually means more lens elements, giving you more corrections for for you know optical. Uh, 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 aberrations and, and, and uh, errors that, that, it, that come to be when you, when you use the lens. Uh, so more lens elements and higher quality lens elements. Uh, they are more expensive lenses are polished better. Sometimes they have a coating which is useful. Um, they will be sharp all the way up to the edges of the lens and sometimes with cheaper lenses the, the, the edges get blurry and you actually only have a very small uh, field of view that's actually sharp and in focus. Uh, so that helps. Um, so if you buy a, a loop for a dollar from eBay, which I did just for fun to see what would happen, you'll get something that usually is decent, it's made in China, it will be okay, it will give you some magnification, but there are higher quality optics out there, and those will be more expensive. It's that simple. I guess it's the same with everything, right? If you buy a $4 pen or you buy a $400 pen, uh, I know I did a video on whether expensive pens are worth it, but Clearly, there will be a difference in quality. It's that simple. Uh, so that's one thing to look out for. Something else to look out for is what's really useful. If you have a look at the um, uh, the loop, I'm taking one here. This one, as you can see, is black. Now, if you, I'm not sure how well I can show you this, but the inside of the lens. So if you look sort of into the lens, not through the lens, but into the lens to the sides of the the, the frame here. Um, in this case. It's black. It probably looks a little whitish, but that's just the, the edges of the lens you see. It's black. Why is it useful to have a black inside? Well, because that eliminates reflections. If you have something like white in there, that will, you know, the, the object you're trying to magnify will actually be reflected in there, light will be reflected in there, and that's a bit of an issue. So often, the, I, I found the black edges, black edges to be very uh, useful and very pleasant and give a very calm image. So that's something to look out for. And then something else, I think, uh, is magnification. As I said, a lot of these loops give you a magnification of 10 times, and that is more than ample. 
uh, you can get higher magnifications if you like, 20 times, 15 times, 30 times. Um, but I think for most network, 10 times is, is very good. An issue you have with, with loops that magnify more than 10 times is that the higher the magnification, the closer you have to be to the object you're trying to magnify, because these lenses have a very short focal length. And you can imagine that if you have a loop like this, and you have to put the nib almost in there to be able to, to actually focus on it, and that's not very useful. Particularly because a nib is a sharp object, right? It's metal, so if it scratches the lens, you will see that scratch magnified, because that's what a loop does, and you probably have to buy a new one. So, you know, a huge magnification may sound appealing, but it's not necessarily better, and there are other issues. The higher the magnification, the more aberrations you usually have in the lens, uh, the, the, the more difficult it is to use, the, the closer you have to get, uh, and, and usually the more edge artifacts you get, so it's, it's, it's difficult. If you want to buy a high-powered loop, I strongly suggest going to a shop where you can try it out first. Maybe go to a pen show. A lot of people, for example, you can buy some, some excellent stuff from Pentooling. Pentooling.com, uh, the, the, the owner of that uh, website is, is uh, uh, present a lot of pen shows. Now, he's got very good optics and, and uh, you can try stuff out there. So, so try something like that. The final thing I'll say is that just because a loop is marked to have a certain magnification doesn't mean it actually does. Um, on eBay you will find a lot of loops that are very cheap and that will claim to magnify 30 times or 60 times. Usually they're not even 10. Um, so, you know, be, be careful and don't have extremely high expectations. A high-powered loop will be expensive. And when I say expensive, I mean something over $30. Um, if you're going to buy that for $5, then you will not get something that has that magnification. Nevertheless, it doesn't mean that what you're buying is a crappy loop. It may still be very useful. I'm going to show you one of those, uh, in fact, two of those, I think, uh, in, in the demo part of this video. So that's pretty much what I can tell you about loops. Uh, I will take one apart in the video, and the, the second part of the video, to, to show you how these, these multiple lens elements work. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that with your own loop. I'm just doing that to, to show you this. And of course, if it's in place, keep it in place. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. Uh, and, and that's all there's to it. So I hope that part of the video is going to work out because it will be difficult to, to do video of these high magnifications, but we'll see what will happen. And um, that's all there's to it. So I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so first I thought I, I would show you the, the four loops I'm using, and this is in the order in which I acquire them. This is the one by this is the one I got from Richard Binder's site. Uh, very high quality optics, also by far the most expensive ones I own. Um, it's made in Belarus by a company called Belomo. This is the triplet, ten times power magnification. Um, very nice optics. Now we have this doublet. It's marked sixteen power magnification. I'll just grab an ink cloth here, so that I can take it apart. I got this one from Tim uh, at the uh, DC Pen Show. Thank you, Tim. Be very careful here. I can unscrew that one. So again, don't please don't try this at home. Don't don't damage your lenses. I'm just showing this for educational purposes. So you see, there's one lens down there, and then there's a second one correcting for flaws at the first lens and giving you a higher magnification than the single lens would give. And I have to screw that back in place, not damaging anything. There we go. So, this is marked doublet, and it is a doublet because it has two lens elements, whereas this one is a triplet, it has three, and I can't take that one apart, and I don't actually, well, I probably can if I would unscrew that bit, but I won't. It's, uh, let's keep that in place. Then we have this one, which, I'm um, sorry about the reflection, uh, I'll open up the little box. It came in this nice little box, um, I got this from eBay, $5.99, and you get two lenses, one is 30 times and one is 60 times magnification, at least that's what's on there, but it's not. It's actually a low magnification, but that's okay. This one is funny because it has two magnifications, they do actually differ, and it has a little light, it has two lights in fact. Uh, which is uh, very useful, uh, because uh, these these lenses magnify quite a bit. You lose some light, uh, and it's it's usually it's it's quite dark when you when you use that for magnification. 
So five dollars ninety nine and shipping, not bad. And then I've got this one, another small one from eBay. Uh, I paid a dollar for this uh, plus shipping. Uh, this is a thirty power loop, and I can tell you right now it's not a thirty power loop, but it is a decent little thing, and I, I don't mind. I, I actually purchased it. I think it's uh, it's pretty much okay. Right. So what about magnification? Well. I, I did, this is some Rhodia paper, I did a little bit of writing there, I, I wrote f a fairly small font with a fine nib, uh, I, I hope this is going to work out. So first of all, here's a regular loop, okay? So you clearly get some magnification with this, um, and with that little round thing you get some stronger magnification, but it's it's not a huge, huge magnification you're, you're getting here, it's, it doesn't make a, a huge difference. Okay, now let's have a look at the triplet. As I said, it's difficult to do the get the lighting here. Let's see if I can move that around a bit. Um, you see that? That is quite a powerful magnification. And when I go to this, this these two words, very fine, and you see that they are really magnified quite a bit, which is really good. Um, of course, you could also use this on a nib. Right, that would give you the same effect of a fairly strong magnification. Ten times, this way you can check out everything, all the details. The nib slit, is it wide enough? Uh, is the, the tipping, are there any damage on there? Uh, is it smooth enough, etc. Then we have this doublet. Uh, it, it's marked 16 power magnification, uh, but magnification doesn't seem any more pronounced uh, than the, the ten time loop. Uh, I didn't really notice that at first, uh, when I was in DC. Uh, but now that I've used it a bit more, you see the word very there? And you see the word very with this one? It, I, to my mind, I don't think it's a, it's a more powerful magnification. Okay, then we have this funky little chicken from uh, eBay, uh, which has a light, which is very useful. I'll show you the difference. So this is, let, let's, let's check out that one first. Um, I think this is close to 10 times again. It's definitely not 30 power, but it's, you know, it's, it's decent. Now what you can do is you can switch on the light, and then, you see, it, it gets a lot easier to see the details. So I'm, I'm glad I got this one, even though it's not 30 power, I was pretty sure it wouldn't be 30 power, but it's a decent thing, $5.99, and the light really helps. In, in studying the object. As you can see, it's much easier to see the details here. So I think that's ten times. Then you have the smaller loop. That has its own light. It has two lights. Came with a battery and all. Um, you have to get very close, but you get some real close-up details of the object you're studying. Uh, I think this is close to fifteen times magnification. Maybe twenty times. I'm, I'm not absolutely sure, but I think something in that range is very difficult to estimate. Um, but it really gives you a nice, clear, crisp view. And it's even uh, a quite... the, the focus is quite well, so even a, along the edges I think you, you have a fairly um, crisp image. And notice that the inside of the, uh, the loop is actually black, so you don't have those, those uh, reflections I talked about. Okay, and then finally we have this one. As I said, a dollar on eBay. Uh, it's a very simple Chinese thing. The lens is too large to be 30 power magnification. It's 21 millimeters. Clearly, bigger lenses will give you a wider field of view, but usually they also give you a lower magnification. Um, so what we have here is some small writing. As you can see, it's, it's decently magnified, but I'm not even sure whether this is 10 times. Uh, I've got the feeling it's a little less than that. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. You use these things by putting them really close to your eye and then taking some object. Um, so this is not the way you, you use them. You don't, you don't actually hold them like this. What you do is you put them very close to your eye and then you, uh, uh, um, it, it, it works. So I'm actually I'm wondering what would happen if I would put it very close to the lens of the camera, which is the way you should use it. I'm not sure whether it can focus. There you go. I'll do that with all the, the, the four loops. So here, this is how you would use it, and as you can see, you get really nice detail of your nib um, and, and things you cannot see with the naked eye. You see those little drops of ink? I think it's beautiful. Some nibs are, are really great to, to, to check out like this and, and explore a bit. So that's this one. Very decent, 
One dollar, can't go wrong with that, but it's not 30 power. Then we have, let's go the other way around, I just started. Um, so here we've got that Chinese uh, one I got from eBay, um, with the, the, the double loop. As you can see, very nice, crisp image. Uh, quite good near the edges. Um, as you can see there. Uh, I'll switch on the light. The problem with the light is, when you're using a nib, that it's very reflective, of course, and that, you see, you, you actually blind yourself. Now, I found that when I activate the other light, so I activate this light where I'm looking through that part of the loop, uh, that helps. It gives you light, but it's not as blinding as with the other, the light that actually that's near the loop. So then I'll go for the other, the really high power bit. I hope I can make this focus. Um, let me see. Where is the? Here we go. You really see the tip of the nib. You really see a lot of detail. So I think this is 15 or maybe 20 times power. Um, definitely more than that uh, lens gives you. Um, very nice, I think. Okay, then we have this 16 power loop. Um, I mean, as you can see, I, I really don't think it's it's 16 power, but it's it's pretty decent actually. You see that it's 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 quite sharp near the edges, uh, which which I like. Um, so that's that's decent. You see the detail. You can you can read the the lettering. I think that's pretty cool. And then finally, we have the Belomo loop. Um, very high quality, as you can see, very crisp magnification. You can really read the letters. Look at the feed all the way to the right. You see it's very near the edge of the lens and still it's in complete and utter focus. So that's very good. Very high quality lenses. Um, very decent magnification. You see that? Very good. Nice magnification. Um, I think this is a very, very good loop. Uh, definitely the best one I own. Uh, I often use this one just because it has the double magnification, the two lenses, and it has the lights, which is useful. If you would be able to get this, I mean, from this brand with the light, you would have the ideal loop, I think. So, there you have it. Uh, me talking about lenses. I, I hope it wasn't too boring. I, I hope this may have been a little helpful to you if you're trying to select a loop. Um, you can get some nice deals of eBay. I mean, even this very cheap one for a dollar. I mean, I would say try this, buy it, and, and, and see if you like the idea of a loop. It's, it's so cheap, you don't really lose anything. And yet it gives you a decent quality. So there we go. Um, that's all there's to it. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.